Blind Dating the Alpha Prince, written by Jade Ember, narrated by Lila Carey and Jay Wolf. Chapter 1 Quinn's POV Well, I think we've found the reason you've been so tired lately, Quinn. The doctor smiles at me as I sit on the examining table, and I'm more than a little confused by the expression on her face. What is there to smile about? So, you know how to treat it? I ask, wanting to get to the point. I'm supposed to be out training with my squad now, and I hate feeling like I'm letting them down. It's bad enough my mate Ethan is off on a special mission without me. I had worked really hard to be chosen too, but in the end, they went with another wolf. And now I can't even train. I just feel run down and even a bit nauseous at times. I just want to feel normal again, so I can welcome Ethan back properly when he returns. I can't do anything for it now, but in about eight months, you'll be fine. I stare at her in confusion for a moment, while she just waits patiently until it finally hits me. I'm pregnant? That's right. Congratulations. She nods, looking amused that it took me so long to put it together. A million thoughts fly through my head all at once. Pregnant? I can't believe it. Well, I can believe it, of course. Ethan and I haven't been able to keep our hands off each other since we found each other three months ago. I just didn't think it would happen so fast. Am I really ready for this? Just as quickly as the doubts come on, they disappear again. Of course I'm ready for this. I've always wanted to be a mother, and I know Ethan wants pups too. He's going to be the most amazing father. He's such a caring, protective man. He'd do anything for me and our baby. I can picture him with a little boy, teaching him everything he knows, or with a little girl wrapped around her finger. I can't wait to tell him the good news. I start to get down from the table when pain rips through me, like someone has reached into my chest and is squeezing my heart tighter and tighter. Quinn, what's wrong? I can't answer. It hurts too much. I can only cry out as wave after wave of agony runs through me. I think I hear the doctor calling for help, but that's all I remember before I pass out. When I wake up again, I'm lying in a hospital bed. The room around me is white and sterile, and I see my best friend, Naya, and her mate whispering together at the foot of the bed. Naya? As soon as I say her name, she jumps up. Her eyes are red and her cheeks puffy, like she's been crying. She asks me, How do you feel? That's a good question. The agonizing pain is gone, but in its place is a dull ache, an emptiness, and immediately my blood runs cold. Did something happen to my baby? How was that possible? I hadn't done anything, I only sat up. My mind is already whirling out of control when Naya takes my hand. It's not the baby, Quinn. The baby's fine. I take a gulp of air trying to calm myself. That's good news, but why does she still look so devastated? Her next words tell me exactly why. It's Ethan. I'm so sorry, Quinn. He's gone. My baby. Mom love you. Time goes fast. Ethan left me almost one year now. I've just put Rosemary down in her crib when my doorbell rings. Immediately, she startles and starts to cry again. And I feel like crying too. You and me both, kiddo. I tell her as I scoop her back up and head to the door, trying to soothe her as I undo the chain and turn the bolts before opening up the door. What's wrong with Rosie? 
my best friend Naya asks as she walks in, perfectly dressed and made up as always. She takes my daughter from my arms before I can protest, slipping off her high heels and heading into the living room. I say grumpily, the doorbell woke her up. How many times do I have to say it, Naya? Just knock. Sorry, I forgot. She looks truly apologetic as she gives me a sheepish smile. I sigh, but I let it go. I know she didn't mean to make things harder for me. Naya never means to cause any trouble. She just can't help it sometimes. We've been best friends since we were babies, and we always planned on having our own babies together too. When we met our mates at the same ball just over a year ago, we thought all our dreams were coming true. But 15 months later, Naya's still not pregnant, despite all her and Salazar's best attempts. And while I've got the baby, that's all I've got. Secretly, I think we both envy each other. But I know she wouldn't give Salazar up for anything. And I wouldn't trade Rosemary for anything either. Not even to feel Ethan's strong arms around me again. As much as I feel like I'll die without it some days. I blink back tears at the thought of my mate. I must be more tired than I realized. Usually, I can keep my emotions under better control. I've spent the last year learning to control myself, not to let my sadness overwhelm me. My daughter deserves better than that. So, what's up? I ask as we go into the living room of my small apartment. Rosemary is still fussing a bit, but Naya is happy to hold on to her, so I take a rare moment to sit by myself. You are going on a date, she announces loudly. That must be a joke, so I laugh. A date with my bed sounds perfect right about now. No, a real date with a real man. It's already planned. I'll watch Rosemary. You don't have to worry about a thing. She scrunches up her nose at me. Is she serious? Naya, I'm not interested in dating anyone. That's only because you're scared. I know it's going to be weird, but you can't sit alone in this apartment forever, Quinn. You're still young, and you deserve to have love in your life again. We've had this discussion before, but she's never gone so far as to actually set me up on a date before. So, who am I supposed to be dating, Naya? Well, I don't exactly know. It's kind of a mystery. What? I saw it on Mate Match. There's a man whose profile picture is just him in a mask, and there's a ridiculously long questionnaire you have to fill out if you want to go on a date with him. Everyone's talking about it. He must be someone really important, she explains, naming the most popular dating app at the moment. Or just a total weirdo who doesn't want to show his face, I point out. It sounds crazy to me. Or maybe just a really smart marketing strategy. As gimmicks go, it's not a bad one. But it doesn't mean I'm interested. Well, Danielle and Marietta both tried and they weren't accepted. But I filled it out with your information and you were offered a date. What did you say about me? I'm almost afraid to ask, but I need to know. Just the truth, that you're smart, funny, kind, beautiful, and mother to the sweetest little girl who ever lived. She nuzzles into Rosemary's face as she says the last bit, and my daughter yawns back sleepily, looking about as impressed with the whole thing as I am. You actually told him about Rosemary? I have to admit I'm surprised. I would have thought that would send most guys running in the opposite direction. Then I heard her voice. I did, and he's ready to meet you tonight. Wait, tonight? My voice comes out as a surprised squeak. She asks innocently, Oh, didn't I mention that? No, you most certainly did not. Naya, I can't go on a date tonight. Look at me. There are milk stains on my shirt, my hair hasn't been properly washed in three days, and I can't even remember the last time I put on makeup. Even if I was interested in going out, which I'm not, there's no way I could. You're beautiful. A shower and a shave and you'll be ready to go. A shave? Naya, I'm not sleeping with him. You never know. Now come on and go get started. 
Rosie and I will chill right here, she teases, giving me a wink. I open my mouth to protest, but then I close it again. I'm too tired to argue with her. And a shower does sound kind of amazing right now. And the more I think about it, so does a dinner out. I guess I could at least start getting ready. It doesn't mean I'm actually going to go. Clinging to that thought, I head for the bathroom. 